Hello, I'm Tom Long. Thank you for joining me in my reflections on the epistle reading for this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. It's odd how as time passes and memories begin to fade, which memories stick with us? <laughs> and uh, some of them, for me at least, are memories that anyone else that would go back and uh, if they had been watching that instance in time would have thought that there was nothing significant about it. It was just mundane and boring. And one of those memories that I have is as a very young boy, probably in first grade, we just moved back to West Virginia. My dad was a newly minted uh, professor at the university and he had taken me to the downtown campus and well at that time it was the only campus he had taken me to that campus and was holding my hand and uh, walking me down the sidewalk through throngs of students that were going every different direction to their classes and we were walking past Woodburn Circle at West Virginia University which has these uh, stately beautiful historic uh, buildings around the square but the thing that I remember about that is just having my hand in my father's hand and feeling like he loved me, he was paying attention to me and uh, cared about me and would protect me in all of the chaos that I saw going on around me. Walking with the Lord is a common metaphor for living a Christian life life and uh, it really goes back at least as far as uh, to Moses in, in the Old Testament um, and it's been part of the hymns that we sing in church for a long time as well you know one of the most common and favorite hymns in the church is trust and obey and how does that start out when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Now, as we look at this week's epistle reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, we get the whole chapter this week, um, Paul is dealing with a conflict within the church in Corinth that he had established there in that region of Greece. And it's not really a conflict that we're going to have today. It was a conflict between people who thought it was okay <laughs> to eat food that had been sacrificed to idols and people that thought that that was a form of idol worship and they were still kind of susceptible to the thought that those idols were real gods and that uh, you could be drawn to worship these other gods and, and, and idols. And so there was this conflict going on that's not like any conflict that goes on in the church today, but churches today, like the church then, are made up of people that have all different sorts of personalities and strengths and, and weaknesses. And the principles that Paul lays out for how the, the Corinthians with their differences should relate to one another, how they should handle those differences can still be useful to us in dealing with conflicts in the church today. The know-it-alls had inflated egos. Uh, as Paul said, knowledge puffs up. Uh, they're thinking only of themselves and they acted in ways that caused their brothers and sisters to stumble in their walk and maybe even lose their grip on their father's hand. The know-it-alls had inflated egos. As Paul said, knowledge puffs up. And they were thinking only of themselves and acted in ways that caused other brother and si brothers and sisters to uh, do things that violated their own conscience. And perhaps even to stumble to the point where they would lose their grip on their father's hand. And Paul says that when you sin against a brother or sister in that way, 
you're not just sinning against them, you're sinning against Christ himself. And, you know, when I think about walking across campus holding dad's hand, if those masses of students that were pushing by us had somehow swept me away from him and I got lost in the crowd, how would that have made my father feel? What would that have meant to my father? And when we cause someone to stumble, we're not just causing them trouble, but we're troubling the heart of Jesus. We're sinning against him is what Paul is telling us. But there's another way that we can relate to one another besides this vain puffed up knowledge. Paul says that knowledge puffs up while love builds up. We could love one another. And this word builds up is the translation of a word that means to erect a building. And Paul had already said earlier in 1 Corinthians uh, a couple of times that we as Christians are temples of the Holy Spirit. And so this image is being revisited here in a way saying that if we love each other, we're helping build up the temple for the Spirit of God in the life of another person. In the old days, we called that edifying one another. And we asked ourselves whether something was edifying to a brother or sister. Now, just because we know a lot of church or Bible lingo or the polity of our denomination, that doesn't mean that we should be lording that over other people or trying to make ourselves uh, self-important and you know, puffing up our own egos. The, the thing is that all of us need to be building one another up, no matter what kind of personality and strengths and weaknesses we might have, we're called to edify one another. I am so grateful for the countless souls that over the course of my life have been a blessing to me. They've encouraged me, they've instructed me, they've guided me in my walk with the Lord. And as I look forward from where I am now, I want to be one of those kind of people. I want to be a, a builder. My goal isn't to reach the end of life and say, wow, I really made a name for myself in the church. My goal is that as the people of the church rise up and become more godly, more loving, more just, more merciful, as we rise up and become more Christ-like, that I can feel that assurance that I played some role in the way that we built one another up and came to that place where, where we are all walking with our hand in the Lord's hand where we are all builders together of one another, encouraging one another, enriching one another, building one another up. I wanna be a builder. So my invitation to you this week is to join the construction crew that we call church. Whose life could you build up? Whose life could you enrich? Who could you encourage today? As you have blessed us, Lord, make us each a blessing.